It is the Dynamite Platinum 21 XT. That is some beautiful bottom end. I forgot to leave me an opening to add the footage. I have some footage, uh, longer video footage of actually doing some laps and running this around on the track. I forgot to uh, stop the video and leave a space to insert it. So I'm going to throw it at the end. Uh, at the end of this video uh, is going to be uh, some footage of uh, tuning, testing, and then running on the track of the 21 XP. So uh, stay tuned for that. What? The, how how much does that stand out to y'all? Right? I got I got the purple accessories. Right? Purple, purple, purple. Right? All the all the purple. How how much does that red throttle uh, not throttle that servo steering servo arm how how stick out like a sore thumb is that right there it just doesn't match I, I need to put a purple one on there see y'all later hello and welcome to Nitro Talk uh, if you are into nitro engines, vehicles, anything at all to do with the nitro side of the RC hobby, uh, I really appreciate your support. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff helps. Thank you all very much for joining me. The Dynamite Platinum 21 XP is what we are going to talk about today. Uh, and... We are going to talk about that bottom end that we saw in that uh, short clip there. We're going to see some more running uh, of it. I have a, a longer clip. I uh, take it out on the track for a little bit. Uh, this was my very first time ever running a Dynamite Platinum 21 XP. I've said uh, tons of times, uh, and I'm sure if anyone you know, is familiar, you, you know I've ran a crap ton of SH engines. Uh, many SH engines of uh, various levels. Uh, I would put this one uh, certainly uh, not at the very top of the SH line. Uh, the my opinion, the top of the SH line is like your... Uh, PT21AO, uh, it has all the bells and whistles drilled and filled, crank, etc. Uh, this one, uh, cer while certainly not a, a low-level SH, like uh, a 21C engine that comes in like a stock Red Cat, you know what I mean? Uh, I'd put this in like an upper-mid-level SH. Uh, I'd do not now. I did take this engine apart here on the uh, channel. I have a video of it, uh, but I don't really remember. Uh, I don't really remember uh, how the crank looked. Uh, I would assume that uh, this is not uh, slugged. It is not filled with silicone. Um, it's probably opened up pretty good, probably has uh, a double fang or so on the end of the crank. Uh, but it is a uh, upper mid-level is what I would call this on the SH line. And I tell you what, and this has the metal carb, which uh, I, I generally speaking do not like metal carburetors. Uh, I prefer a composite carburetor. Uh, but I've got plenty of good running out of metal carbs, and this one is working flawlessly. So, uh, all good there. Uh, I uh, certainly, obviously, here have it in my Hyper 21, uh, my pillow ball car. And, not Hyper 21, I'm sorry, Hyper 7. Uh, Hyper 21 is an engine. Uh, this is a Hyper 7 buggy. Uh, my pillow ball, pillow ball car, I have my C-Hub car right back here. Uh, and that is uh, going to be an upcoming video. We're going to talk. I am about to build a new C-Hub car. A new 
Hyper 7 uh, C-Hub. This particular buggy has been in service for at least three years. Uh, and it is getting kind of tired. As you can see, uh, this is one of the first places I look when I'm trying to gauge uh, the condition of my chassis. Uh, I'll look at my front. Let me see if I can... All right. Uh, yeah, there we go. You can see. I'll look at my front dog bone going into the diff. And as you can see, uh, that dog bone is in need of a new pin. That pin is pretty wore. Uh, the drive cup itself isn't horrible, but it has some wear as well. You know what? There we go. I, I, was, I was saying, I didn't look as bad. This side's worse. Look at this side here. Let's oh, get you in there. Can you see? Where am I at? Uh, yep. Yeah. It's hard for me to see. There, okay, there we go. Now you can see it. Yeah, you see that front drive cup and that dog bone? It's too much slop right there. That's a good amount of slop. Uh, and then, you know, otherwise I have a, my upper suspension arm. Uh, the block back here is starting to go on me i've had to uh fix the set screw that holds it in place a couple times it's stripped out there uh there's a couple and bottom's not too bad this is one that had a i had bought a cheap uh chassis protector uh for this thing it was it looked carbon fiber but it was it's just a sticker that you know has carbon fiber look on it uh and it's done a, it did a decent job of helping out a little bit i'm sure that there, there's not much of it left a little piece little piece of it there and little shreds of it right there but the, it's all gone back here and then at the very rear we're starting to dig into the actual metal you know what, that's something I haven't checked in a while, and it's a good, while I'm thinking about it, it's always good, these four screws that hold your diff into place, uh, they are going into plastic, so it is advisable every now and then to give them a check and make sure they're good and tight. Let me see, that, that was pretty good and tight, got about a sixteenth of a turn on that one, that, pretty good those are those were pretty good now let me check my rears here ah okay that one i got about a quarter turn on oh you see that got about a half a turn on that one my battery's done uh and for these Rear, rearward most two these are packed with dirt so let me get the dirt out of them first stuff is packed in there good There we go. What the heck? It almost doesn't seem like dirt. Is that... Oh, you know what? That Okay, <laughs> I forgot something. We'll talk about that in a second. It's supposed to be the uh, dynamite video, and we're going to get to the dynamite, but give me a second. We're talking nitro RCs here. All right, let me check my two rearmost screws. That one was pretty good. That one pretty good too. So these, the two forward most ones in the rear uh, were the ones that needed the Titan most. Uh, but yeah, good good idea to check those uh, often. All right. 
Oh, okay, yeah, so what, that wasn't dirt in there. You know what that was? Uh, th that That's something that I uh, thought about a while back, and I did experiment, and I kind of forgot about it. So, as you can see, uh, at this very rear part of the buggy, uh, it wears down on the chassis. You can even look on the side here and see, oh, where are we at? Oh, yeah. see how this is getting thinner, this chassis plate, sorry, it's hard to, hard to get in there, this chassis plate is getting thinner as it gets to the rear, uh, I had this idea, and I tried it, so I got this roll of aluminum tape right here, and this stuff, I, I've gotten, uh, I've, I've I've used this a few times. Uh, there's some pretty cool stuff you can do with this aluminum tape, uh, aluminum foil tape. Uh, but what I like to do, where is, let me grab my scissor. I did this, crap, did I do it? I think I did it when I built this buggy. Uh, or after, I'm not sure, but I did this, and then uh, it's long gone now. It's all gone, but my idea, because I know that this rear section is going to get wore down. Uh, you come off the jumps, it slaps down, and this, this rear section uh, just gets wore. What I did was took some of this aluminum tape, and just put a square there. I usually do uh, a couple, two or maybe even three. And that is to preserve that rear section. Uh, I know that that is going to slap there, so... First, it's got to go through the tape before it gets to the chassis. So, basically, had I not just done this once and forgotten about it, had I kept up on this, uh, maybe this wouldn't be all worn down back here. Uh, but I think I just did it once and forgot about it. But uh, that was what was stuffed in those two holes there. It was pieces of this aluminum tape. Uh, but anyways, that's that. Let's talk about the dynamite. I put an OS 2050 pipe on here, a classic, um, and it performed beautifully. That is the, when I, if you watch my OPS Speedster Power video, that is what I'm talking about when I mean uh, a beautiful low end, a beautiful bottom end. When you tag that throttle, you it doesn't uh, have to clear out a bit. Uh, it doesn't stumble. It just gives you all the power. Boom, right there. Uh, and that is what I was getting out of this engine. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to think leave this thing in here for a bit, at least for, at least for the next couple weekends couple track days uh, i'm gonna get some running on this dynamite platinum 21 xp oh okay that's the other thing i want to talk about this is a standard button standard head button engine this is not a turbo engine and i think that this would be a good opportunity to uh do a test i my uh, hypothesis, okay, I ran a lot of engines. And my hypothesis is I would be surprised uh, if when turbo heading, turbo buttoning this engine, uh, we see uh, even a 2% a improvement. Uh, I think we're either going to see nothing at all or just an ever so slight bit of improvement. Uh, I don't think that it's certainly nothing like a turbo head and uh, button 
uh, and plug is going to give you 20-30% more power? No, I don't believe that at all. Uh, I think at best, and we're talking about a properly set up standard head button. Uh, yes, if your standard plug is not seated properly, if it's down too low or sticking up into the combustion chamber, I think you can lose performance that way. But uh, if you have the proper standard plug in to where it fits on the bottom of that bowl, uh, just like a turbo plug does, uh, then I think you're going to pretty much get the same performance as you would from a turbo plug. And I think that'd be interesting to test. So uh, maybe we're going to do that. We'll hook up the uh, GPSS, GNSS thingy uh, and get some top speed with the standard plug and then we'll uh, turbo it and see what we can get out of that. I think it'd be a good experiment. Uh, my air filters came in today. Uh, I, is that, I, do I have one? What am I, I'm missing an air filter on something. Oh, no, 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 that's it, okay. You know what, I, I'll, I'll show you what I did. So, my air filter here, the element had uh, shrunk up on me and I did not feel safe. Uh, putting it on the engine. I went to uh, clean it out. I wash and re-oil my filters. I was going to do that and it's not coming apart, right? It's still holding together good, uh, but it is shrunk and I was worried that something would get past it. So I'll show you what I did. I wanted to run the engine. Uh, I wanted to go have my track day and I didn't have a new air filter element to put in here. So And first, let's see if what I did worked. Uh, I don't see anything got past that. That looks uh, just like oil. So, looks good in there. It didn't look like anything got past that. This right here is what I did. So, this is my Traxxas air filter. And I use these pretty much exclusively. Uh, I really love this style of Traxxas air filter. I use it a lot. But, on this one... I threw this extra piece in there. I cut that myself uh, off of a larger piece of foam uh, because, as you can see, look at that. That thing is... it. it come on. It's all uh, pushed up because of having that piece in it. You know what? This one is dead, so... There we go. Yeah, I only use it a little bit, but look at that. You see that thing? That is not how that is supposed to look. Uh, that is all shrunken. Like I said, it's holding together, right? These will uh, eventually start to disintegrate and they'll come right apart. It's not there yet, uh, but it is shrunken. And if I try to use it, by itself, you see, it just does not fit properly anymore. This, uh, the air filter that goes in here, this air filter, before it shrunk, supposed to fill this, fill this uh, housing up uh, fully. Uh, and that just does not do it anymore. So that filter is... Garb. I'm actually going to throw that away, believe it or not. I don't like to throw anything away, but uh, that, you know, maybe there's a smaller air filter that I could use this in. No, I'm just going to chuck it. But I did get my new ones finally came in today. But that right there is, I, I, I needed to, I wanted to run on the track. I could not trust it as is. So I cut that and made a custom second piece to add at the back to make sure uh, none of the dirt got through and it's in and it worked properly so uh, I'm going to be like I said my new filter elements came in I will be uh, cleaning this up putting a brand new air filter element in it uh, and it'll go back on so that's that 
I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I look forward to running it some more. Uh, and my next video is going to be, we're going to talk about my next Hyper 7 build. Thank y'all very much. See you in the next video. Have a great day. It is the Dynamite Platinum 21 XP uh, an SH engine. Let's see how she's feeling today. Feeling pretty good. When I was talking before about the uh, Speedster Power OPS and how it didn't have that beautifully perfect bottom end that I like, this is what that looks like. That is some beautiful bottom end. Top end's looking pretty good too. No kind of lean, no kind of lean, but I'll give it like a uh, eighth of a turn on the top end. Standard plug engine. This is not a turbo engine. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll turbo head it and do some testing. I like it. I like it a lot. It's the first time I've ever ran one of these engines. I've ran plenty of SH8 port engines. There's you know 30 variants of that out there. I've ran a lot of them. I never ran this one specifically, the Dynamite Platinum 21 XP. It is looking lovely. Now, I'm not going for... Since I got lovely bottom and top, I don't need to lean that top anymore. That's plenty of top end for me on the track. More than enough. So, uh, I'm going to... Uh, and you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, take a walk up to the top. Now, it is freaking love bug season, apparently, because those things are swarming out here. They are all over the place, being a pain in the ass. All right, let's come up here. Look at this stuff. Look at these things. All right. Let me raise this up a touch. Get over the rail at least. There we go. All right. How are we looking? Let's get the angle round. There we go. Let's see how the dynamite platinum. 21 XP looks on the track. Overshot that thing a bit, huh? I wasn't lined up for that one. Tell you what, this thing feels really good. Throttle response, crisp. Bottom end is is tits. That's just the only way to that's the only way to describe the bottom end on this thing. Top end is not doing bad at all itself. Beautiful jump. Not bad.
Now, you know what? Someone had mentioned, and yes, it is totally true, my throttle control is garbage. Uh, not smooth at all. I'm, I'm a flicker, right? I, I, I flick the uh, throttle. Whoa. Let me, uh, I'm gonna try on this back straight to get a little bit of, to not. Okay, I mean, it wasn't bad. I'm trying to learn how to hold the throttle. I mean, the straightaway, I can hold it full blast. That ain't no problem. But when I'm not trying to go full blast, I just kind of flick it. Let me try to do it on this back straight. Yeah, it's kind of slow. I should have gave it a bit more. I'm, l I'm learning that. I, I, I know I have shitty throttle control. Well, this thing sounds good, though. I like this. Uh, you know I like my SH engines. I've had a lot of great running out of SH eight port engines, all right? But uh, yeah, I like this one. Uh, could probably take uh, the turbo head button right off of another SH eight port and throw it right on here. But she's dropping to a nice idle, beautiful high end, beautiful low end. I got nothing to complain about.